So you're going to Kilimanjaro and you're probably thinking about what to pack. Hey everyone, I'm Salo from Follow Alice and in this video I'll share with you our experience going up Kilimanjaro and also what we learned from our clients. First things first and is your bags. The, that's what you carry your gear in. So you have to think about that you have a port on Kilimanjaro and you will have a bag where you carry your own personal gear and you also have a duffel bag that you give to the porter to carry for you. Now the way to split it up is the things that you need throughout the day should be in your day pack and the things that you will need at the camp, uh, for example your sleeping bag or sleeping mat, that will be in your duffel bag that you hand over to the porter. So your day pack is what you're going to carry every day and in our case we use the 45 liter bag. It's a little bit on the large scale, you can do with a 30 or 35. Uh, but we had some extra camera gear, so we chose to go with this one. So one important thing is the harness and your normal backpack probably doesn't have something as comfortable as this. Sometimes you carry it for up to eight hours a day. So it's very important that you feel comfortable while carrying it. Another thing that is really great is the net on the back. Just make sure that you don't get too warm and, and there is air between yourself and the bag so all the heat can get out. Otherwise you start sweating and it's, it's a bit uncomfortable. Hiking bags compared to normal backpacks have way better harness. They have extra uh, pockets for you and also extra clippers to even out the, the weight. So you can adjust a little bit while you hike. Get one of these, uh, a normal day pack or backpack that you use for school is probably not gonna do the job. When we went to Kilimanjaro, we packed light. So this 65 liter bag actually uh, did the job for us. But I would say that you probably need something a little bit bigger, around the 100, 85 can also do, uh, as you also have a big sleeping bag in there if you go with us. And also when you pack and if you go with Follow Alice or any other operator that will give you a sleeping bag, remember to leave some space in this bag because you will obviously have to put it in there. Your sleeping bag, you'll use it each and every night and it keeps you warm. On Kilimanjaro it, it starts warm but you do go up the altitude and as you go around base camp it really gets to freezing. So you will need a good sleeping bag and comfort temperature around minus 10. And now again sleeping bags vary a lot and the most important thing is what are they made of. You can have synthetic sleeping bags and you can have sleeping bags with down. The major difference between them is that down is a bit lighter uh, and it's also quicker to heat up. So once you get into a sleeping bag, it gets warm very quick and the synthetic takes a longer time. The down does require a bit more maintenance because it cannot get that humid and you should avoid it getting wet at all times. Now, if you try to follow Alice, we will take care of this. We have great sleeping bags and you will get that for free included. Uh, but if you don't, then you use more budget to operators Make sure that they have good quality sleeping bags. If not, if you have your own, then you can also bring that. So this is a down sleeping bag. And one thing you will notice on good sleeping bags is that they have an extra strap inside of them. And this is very important because you can close it around your neck and no cold air will go through. And that will keep you warm and also the, the, the warm from your body wouldn't go out. So you can pull the strap. And if it gets too warm, obviously you can open up a little bit. If you really do freeze, even with a good sleeping bag, there is a few hacks you can actually do. You lose a lot of heat from the top of your head, so a warm hat goes a very long way. It's actually amazing, if you put a hat on and you freeze a bit, you'll feel warm instantly. A pair of thermo underwear is also a very good idea to keep you warm um, if you do struggle with keeping warm. And sometimes if you don't have a really good sleeping bag, these small things can help. You could also put on pair of extra socks or even an extra t-shirt. Another thing you need to fit in the duffel bag that you give to the porters is your sleeping mat. There is normally two types, either foam or inflatable. Keep in mind that if you get a sleeping mat from your operator, you need to fit that in as well. One of the most important things, if not the most important thing, is your boots. So hiking boots comes in many different shapes and, and brands. But the most important thing is what is it made of. In this case, I have leather boots. The, the big competitor to leather is Gore-Tex, which is great. 
They, the only difference between leather and Gore-Tex is uh, breathability. With the leather you can actually control how breathable it should be, uh, but leather do require uh, way more maintenance than Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is easy to keep clean, uh, you clean it and that's it. With your leather boots you really have to clean them and then you have to wax them. And the wax makes them water repellent. Uh, but also it takes away the breathability. So if your boots are new, you'll have to break them in. And that means hiking around 100 kilometers, and that's before you go on the mountain. Uh, your foot has to get used to the boots to avoid blisters, and also for the boots to get used to your feet. One good tip with your boots is that you either keep them on or put them in your hand luggage. We have experienced clients back go missing and they don't have their equipment. Now we can replace a lot of things and you can borrow and so on, but the boost really is a personal thing and it's really hard to replace. A good down jacket is also essential. You won't need it for the first couple of days, uh, but as you get higher and higher, you start using it in the camp. When you relax in the evening, it gets <laughs> very chilly. And also for your summer climb. Now these, Jackets are like the minimum I think you use for the summit climb, but I do like layers so that works for me But you can also get bigger jackets like with follow Alice We do rent them out or you can maybe have your own the first couple of days You do not want to keep it in your day pack and uh, you probably put it in the duffel that you give to the porters uh, But as you get higher and higher it start getting colder So it's good to get it like the last two three days put it in your day pack because um, during lunch when you have breaks and so on it gets chilly and it's really nice to have the down jacket together with your warm hat is, uh, is amazing when you have uh, stops at cold places a lot of people use hiking poles they're a great thing to go down I found but I didn't use them too much where if you travel with follow Alice we'll give you a pair and you can try them out if you like them then go for it a lot of people actually love them and wouldn't hike without it so really a matter of taste Rain jacket and rain trousers. Normal rain jackets as we know them is probably the most waterproof jackets you can get. But as you're gonna be very active on the mountain, you're gonna be hiking a lot, you also need a rain jacket that is uh, breathable. So there is different rain jackets. This is one of them. Uh, it has a, what do you call a membrane, which uh, makes it breathable uh, and very waterproof and water repellent at the same time. They also call it a 20,000 hydrostatic head, a 20,000 millimeters hydrostatic head, um, which tells you a bit about how waterproof and repellent it is. But yes, it's a very important thing, and I'm sure nobody goes on a mountain without a good rain jacket. Another thing your rain jacket is really good for, it's a windbreaker. Some people like to have a big jacket, some people like to have more layers, so I put this a jacket on top of my down jacket and it acted as a windbreaker. The rain trousers work in the same way as a rain jacket in uh, regards to material and breathability. You can also choose to have uh, ski pants with you. You can use for the summit climb. Uh, you're so high up that uh, rain turns into snow anyways, so you don't really get wet at the, at the summit. The ski pants won't get as uh, wet as the rain pants, uh, but the rain pants is a must have with you. Layers are amazing, they really give you flexibility to regulate your body temperature as you hike. Besides the base layer, I'll bring two warmer layers with me, and one of them is, is a fleece. Hiking trousers, personally I like the zip off, and so the first couple of days I had them off, and then as we climbed higher I started attaching them. It's very easy, so then you have one pair. If you already have a pair of hiking trousers that cannot be zipped off, it's good to have a pair of shorts with you. It's really nice in the low altitudes. So the last layer will be the inner layer, is what you have closest to your body. And I'll bring two of those, two sets, and that is a the long trousers, the base layer itself, some underwear. You do sweat and these are made of merino wool. It uh, transports the, uh, the moist away from your body. Um, it's a really nice thing to have. I would avoid cotton because it gets heavy, it dries slow in case it gets wet. So wool, merino wool is a really good thing. And also for the underwear, you are on a mountain for seven days and you get what I call washi-washi. It's also really good because it's antibacterial and you don't get a shower on Kilimanjaro. 
Gloves is very important. If you do tend to get cold very easily in your hands, a closed glove is, is a very good thing because then your, your fingers, they warm each other. But if you want some more flexibility, if you have a camera, if you want to record some stuff, you can also go for these, but get a pair of proper uh, gloves. Your socks on a day hike, regular hiking socks will do. And you can also choose to have a pair of liners underneath. It also helps avoid a bit of blisters because the friction will be between your socks rather than the sock in your skin or the boot. And for the summer day, it's recommended to have a pair of summer socks. They are thicker and they are warmer and you will need it. It's very important with the gloves and the socks because that is there you will freeze the most. Hiking bags normally have these compartments and this is for your camel bag. It's for your water system and they also have a hole out so you can have the mouthpiece uh, sticking out. It's very convenient when you hike because you can just pull it up and drink. This system is quite common and it's actually very, very good to have. It makes life way easier um, if you are tired or you are challenged on the mountain. It's way easier to just pull this out, have a drink, job done instead of reaching for your bottle. This specific one is insulated. This is for the summer day, so it doesn't freeze. One problem these camelbacks have that they do freeze in the mouthpiece at the summit when it gets really cold. Water is vital when you're hiking mountains, especially because it helps cope with altitude sickness. So if you do not have a camel bag, you can have bottles and they are very good. These kind of more thin bottles are great, especially for the summer day, because you can put them inside of your jacket and make sure they do not freeze. This is a little harder to have in your jacket, but as they freeze top down, you can actually just turn it upside down in your bag. And then when you need to drink, you just flip it and you have water. Another tip is that you can take a sock and you can actually place your water bottle inside of it for the summer day and that also help insulate it a little bit. You should have two to three liters of water with you up to the summer day. So make sure you actually have more than one bottle. You won't have a shower on Kilimanjaro, but you will have what they call washi washi. Uh, so a little towel like this will do. That's all I have. And also it dries quick. A good thing to think about is the material you bring with you that they actually able to dry quick. I use a toilet bag uh, for toothbrushes and other personal hygiene. And also you can bring some painkillers, which is recommended if you get to feel some altitude sickness. And some people also bring diarrhea pills. It's also a good thing because you can't get diarrhea on the mountain. Uh, also very good to bring stuff like a bit of plaster, uh, blister plaster if you get that. Uh, I use sports tape to try to avoid getting blisters toothbrush and so on. Um, I use a toilet bag for that. It's easy to get and it's all in there. Uh, mosquito repellent is also a good thing. The first few days you are in a malaria zone. Malaria tablets is also a great thing. Okay, so to all the small bits, but very, very important bits. Sun hat, avoid getting sunstroke. It is Africa, it is Tanzania, and it's really warm. Especially when there's no clouds, you really get to feel the sun and a warm hat very very important when you stand still put the sun if you feel cold in the in the night in the evening it goes a long way and a balaclava balaclava is really good for the last day the summit Kili is in Tanzania is very close to the equator so the sun goes down very quick you around seven o'clock is dark so a head torch is a really good thing around the camp and when you want to find your way around and also for the summit climb you will need it because we normally climb um, during the night. Uh, so we see the sunrise uh, in the morning, use it all the way. Spare batteries for the head torch is also very important because you will use it a lot. A camera, a camera is a very good idea. You're probably only gonna climb Kilimanjaro once, unless you're like our co-founder Danny, who did it two, three times. A pair of binoculars can be fun to, to look around. Um, and especially when you get up in the heights. Last but not least, remember your passport. Check what kind of visas you will need from your country and vaccines and so on with your GP. There is a long queue at the airport for visas. Uh, you can get them for $50, but if you do have a, an embassy near you, and Tanzanian embassy, you can uh, get it beforehand and avoid standing in the queue. I hope you enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you. Um, and happy climbing.